let's go ahead and bring in Tony Eckrich. He's the owner of Cart to Cart in Sterling Heights. How are you doing today? Doing quite well, Ronnie. How are you? I thought for sure I'd see you out on a go-kart or something. Actually, I got some work going on with my car, so I'm uh, at home today. But oh. uh, the track will be open at 4 o'clock, 4 to 10, Monday through Thursday. Okay, for those not familiar with Cart to Cart, bring us up to speed. Uh, we're an indoor go-kart facility. The building's about 54,000 square feet. The track actually is a fifth of a mile, and we can put up to 12 drivers on the track. And uh, everything's fully timed and scored. So at the end of a five minute race session, which is about 10 to 12 laps, all the drivers get to see their race lap times and can compare and contrast the, uh, you know, kind of the brag rights of who is fast and who is not so fast. But we also offer a full, serve, uh, full service bar uh, catering. We have a large social room that actually used to do more corporate business. Now we've actually turned that into more social uh, opportunities with cornhole and the large screen TV and uh, more distancing going on as well. But uh, been actually we've completed 2 million miles in over 20 years inside one building on Van Dyke just south of 19 in Sterling Heights. That's a lot of miles. How have you had to change how you operate during the pandemic? Uh, obviously with the distancing and that type of uh, space demand, we're fortunate enough that uh, Again, the building's kind of large. The track takes up uh, about 70%, about 42,000 square feet, leaving about uh, 18,000 square feet left. So distancing is not a real problem. Um, you know, PPE was the was the program in the beginning when we opened up. Customers as well wearing face masks, things like that. Some of the other things we've uh, invested in is uh, a UVC light box. Kind of like when you go to the barber shop or us guys go to the barber shop there's some combs that the guys keep the barber keeps under a blue light right i don't know if the girls have that at the salon but the uvc light actually uh kills the germs so we invested about four or five thousand dollars in a uh, refrigerator sized box that uh, you can place up to a dozen helmets in there you can even put your purse in there other things of uh that you wear and turn it on in about eight minutes it somehow just sends in the sends the light killing things going on and uh, helps the helps the germs go away. So that's one big investment that we did take upon ourselves to implement. And uh, after each person drives the cart, we're cleaning out the steering wheels, the touch points, things like the steering wheel seat belt. Uh, the carts do have adjustable pedals and seats, but we actually maintain the control of that just to limit the amount of cleaning that's necessary. But um, we also mandate everybody to wear a helmet so we are cleaning these helmets. We also advocate anybody to bring their own. And in Michigan, there's a lot of people that have motorsports toys, so people do have their own helmets as well. But uh, when people come in, we'll issue them a helmet. They keep that helmet for their experience at cart to cart, whether that be one, two, or three races, and then they give that helmet back to us. And then at that point, we uh, entered into the cleaning process. So that's kind of the main things that we're doing. Um, also some limitations on group size, trying to come in and make reservations. Um, we used to be doing about 10 to 10 to 20 person groups, but keeping them separate if they sit down, just like in the restaurants. So with the state reopening, have you found that business is picked up because people are so desperate to try to be entertained right now? I mean, how much Netflix can we really watch, right? Amen to that. Uh, summertime comes Michigan, people are outdoors. Uh, highly recreational state, but the uh, the business has just been kind of overwhelming. Actually, when we got back open, uh, you know, a month ago, getting things uh, tuned up, phones ringing a lot more. We got the website uh, that helps guide people, but there's still a lot of questions as to you know, hey, are you open? How does it work? There's a lot of new customers calling, also that we haven't ever seen before. They have more questions, but online booking is actually coming up. Uh, coming online next week. We've got just had a meeting yesterday with our web guy and uh, there's about a three, four step process to get the online booking actually up and available and then functioning between online and uh, the front desk. So those are some training things that we're working on this weekend, but controlling the flow of people in and out of the building will be a little easier with online because then we know actually who's coming. Um, in my business, we've been more like a movie theater. Sometimes if there's no scheduled events for the day, 
you really don't know how many people will actually be in the building until you get there, just like a movie theater, right? So just some of those changes uh, that the, the demand is up. There's less things to do, I think, you know, concerts, festivals, barbecues, you know, school functions, sports functions, all the things that we normally do with our family and friends are curtailed such that there are a lot of people just seeking outlet and we're seeing a lot of families come out. Sometimes they do make a reservation, but uh, you know, a car full of people pulling in, typically it's you know not just two people, it's probably four to six to eight. And we do take reservations for six or more uh, drivers and the online booking will take care of five or less drivers coming in. Tony, over the course of the pandemic, people have been here and there out and about to find some new activity, something fun to do. Uh, with their friends or even with their their family but they're and so they're driving place to place and maybe they're going and going and they're going to be driving in the go-karts at cart to cart but maybe they're frustrated with all this with all this COVID 19 stuff that's been going on for seven months and it really makes them want to pick up an axe and throw it at a wall that's now available as well at cart to cart isn't it that up you know i've, I've been doing this for 20 years and we've been focused on the go-karts the axe throwing Thanks for bringing that up. Just started uh, about a year, a year and a half ago. So we're seeing a lot of, actually kind of popular with the women. Interestingly, a lot of women are calling for the, the ax throwing, but that's something that can be done together in a combo package. You can come in and buy a go-kart race and an hour of ax throwing. If you do buy any go-karting, then uh, you get a discount on the ax throwing. But if you come in, we can offer uh, 19 bucks per person per hour for ax throwing, 14 years old and up. And then uh, if you do buy a go-kart race of any sort, basically that ax rate drops down to $13 per person. And we've got an ax coach that'll give you some tips on technique, uh, how to throw, you know, how to score. Uh, we are investing in a uh, kind of a uh, online, it's a cloud-based uh, ax target system. We'll have a projector that actually shoots seven different images on the wood target. And instead of just focusing on the rings of a target, like the you know, like the target store at the bullseye in the middle, this one actually has some different uh, opportunities for different scoring, and you know has a little gamification, if you will, with the projected image. Uh, it doesn't automatically score for you, but uh, it does allow some different activities on the axe lane. Uh, we can put up to six people on an axe lane, and our four. Our private axe room has four axe lanes and would accommodate up to 24, 25 people in a private setting, which is kind of unique. So you don't have to rub elbows with other people in the uh, in the game area if you do have a group size of anywhere from you know 18 to 24. Uh, so a lot of unique opportunities for axe playing. That's actually one of the highest uh, things sought after on our website at the moment. I, I will say when this first came out, obviously, uh, Cart to Cart was not the first one to bring this to Metro Detroit. When it first came out, I was like, what are they thinking? Putting an axe in the hands of people who have been drinking alcohol, number one. But number two, I like I'm dangerous with a bowling ball because <laughs> I've gone to bowl and it slipped out of my hands backwards. So I'm like afraid that when I go to throw the axe that it goes. And I will say my girlfriends have done this and I'm like, no, I'll, I'll skip that part and I'll just, you know, stick with the other part of it. So I would say maybe you guys need to put like on that projector, a big thing of COVID, you know, how COVID was like the, the image of the bumpy ball type thing. That I think is what people want to right now really <laughs> try to destroy. Uh the projector allows for other things too. I've, I've heard stories of where we're buying the system. You know, people bring in their pictures of their ex-boyfriend and <laughs> put it up on the target, uh, things like that. But uh, one of our employees did build a COVID, what was it? a COVID target board, which did look like kind of a, a cross between Fred Flintstone's shirt and some tie-dye looking circles for uh, different score points. And it was probably like four by eight, maybe three foot by six foot that he had uh, some throwing knives. He was using throwing knives at home during COVID. But uh, to answer your question, the the axe is it's a hatchet, a little smaller. Something you're gonna you know split kindling wood out back at Grandpa's house or maybe your own house. But uh, it's 24 ounces. You know, it's a pound and a half. 22 ounces. It's kind of like a heavy hammer. And uh, 
technique, honestly, you're trying to throw it with one revolution and stick the metal head into the wood. So it does take, uh, you know, a little bit of coordination if you've ever thrown darts, uh, bowling balls, you know, it's an accurate thing, bocce ball, similar, it's, it's technique, it's motion, it's uh, letting go of the instrument. So hopefully you're going to, you know, in bocce ball, you're trying to get it down the, down the lane. Uh, bowling, you're trying to get it in the pocket of the one and the three pin to get the strike. Um, so with axe throwing, we've got a scoring game that runs up to 51 points. And then our new projector system will have, again, have about a half a, dis half a different scoring games that people can play with a little bit more automation and some pizzazz because the TV screen shows a score. And uh, America has a big demand for entertainment. We have Disney World, we have Disneyland, we've got in the Midwest, we've got Cedar Point, Kings Island, you know, both big coaster parks, but America does have a lot of entertainment at their disposal. And through COVID, you know, we've been able to uh, eke out what we needed to do. Um, redid some interior finishes. We changed our pit area to make that a little safer. Um, what do we do? We are adding a new uh, front desk check-in to split our go-karting and axe customers check-in procedure, uh, separate from the, the food and the beverage counter, just to distribute, basically keep labor focused on what they need to do and a better task. And uh, the new front desk will help uh, streamline some of that check-in process. But we can actually run uh, something else over COVID that we had changed the length of the go-kart races. Uh, it used to be eight minutes. It was about 15 to 17 laps, depending on how aggressive of a driver you may be. But uh, something I learned out in Denver in March, right before COVID shut us all down, the, the Denver facility was doing five minute races on the evenings and weekends because of the demand at that time of day. So we started doing five minute races. We can execute more people through the system. It also decreases the wait time in the cafe area that overlooks the pits and the racetrack. So we can kind of get people in and out of the system a little quicker, a little more efficiently in the five minute race concept actually uh, after we looked at it from a cost standpoint we were able to lower the price you don't get as much time on the track but it's a it's a lower price point that uh, you can get out on the track more times per visit and we've seen a lot of uh, improvements of efficiency on our side but it also has just increased the uh, the throughput which keeps people happy because they're not waiting as long right we all try to learn new things during this crisis. What's one of the positives that you think cart to cart has learned that will maybe stick around post pandemic? Um, there's one more pricing model that we're about to institute that some of my uh, business associates in Kentucky and Ohio are succeeding with. And uh, that's going with a wristband model price point, uh, 50 bucks for three hours, unlimited carting and ax throwing for three hours during the week and then 50 bucks for two hours on the weekend for unlimited ax throwing and go-karting. So that's something that uh, the trampoline park entertainment business has been doing for years. Uh, they basically sell the experience by time, okay? So there's a different shift throughout the day. You might have the first shift, second shift, and in between each one of those three hour shifts is a 30 to 45 minute window to clean, uh, prepare the facility for the next shift of customers and uh, the success they're having with the wristband, you know, the time period model, they call it the adrenaline pass at my buddy's place called Full Throttle in Cincinnati. The adrenaline pass is a three hour experience and you get a lot of value. You come in, you can, uh, you know, take a little bit more time to get your races through. And besides online booking starting next week, um, we do take reservations for six or more, but the the, the adrenaline pass type concept of a wristband for three hours of time is some is the next edition of our price model that we're bringing to the table. And uh, in the meeting room, we've got cornhole set up, big screen TV. Uh, people are coming out lingering a little bit longer because they frankly want to get out of the house, right? So uh, some of the things that we're excited to try would be the final step would be the wristband price model. The online bookings uh, run the cusp of that, the shorter races, smaller price point. Um, the demand has actually increased from our walk-in customers. We're seeing a lot more walk-in type clientele, which are buying the combination pass, you know, the couple of go-kart races and an hour of ax throwing so they can get out of the house and have some fun with their family or friends, whoever they may have come with. 
Yeah, I think the axe throwing is a good way to release some stress for so many of these parents that are having to homeschool right now. Hey, uh, Tony, quickly before we let you go, uh, when were you guys able to reopen? Uh, about a month ago, a month and a half ago. And for those that want to go out and experience Cart to Cart and some of the other events that you have there, how can they find your uh, organization and Cart to Cart? Do you have an online site? Yeah, our website is the same as our name. We spell it with a K, K-A-R-T-2, the number, numeral, K-A-R-T dot com. So it looks like cart to cart dot com. In the beginning, when I got the business open, I wanted the name to uh, connotate what we do. So integrated the word cart in there twice, I guess. That's awesome. But online, yeah, online presence. Uh, if you look up go-karts near me, we're in Sterling Heights on Van Dyke, first driveway south and 19 mile. Such a, a, a fun thing to do. And like you said, it's a great way to get out of the house and make it a family time as well. Laugh a little, relieve some stress, and enjoy yourself as a family. Cart to cart in Sterling Heights. Tony Eckert, we uh, appreciate your time this morning, and we wish you continued luck as this pan pandemic wears on. Thank you very much. And uh, Stephanie is happy to take any reservations. If anybody's listening or uh, watching on TV, her extension's 103 for group sales of six, res six drivers or more. And then again, uh, if you have five or less, you can pretty much just walk in. Saturdays are always busier, you know, 6 to 10 p.m., just like everything's going on with these restaurants out there. So... Uh, coming out, have some fun, bring your friends. If you got a little bit reasonable size of a group, please call ahead and we can handle that more appropriately. Awesome. Thank you so much for sharing that information.